Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. So I get into a lot of these, I'll call them barbecue uncle conversations. It doesn't necessarily have to be with an uncle or at a barbecue, but I'm talking about when uh, folks start talking about their relationships with people they love in a sort of confrontational way, you know, saying stuff like, well, you know, every day is a struggle. Every day you got to fight for it. (laughs) And perhaps unsurprisingly, considering her famous motto is when they go low, we go high, former First Lady Michelle Obama focuses on some different language. She's got a new book out called The Light We Carry, and it's a book about how she coped with different situations in her life, a lot of it pertaining to managing relationships. And in this interview with NPR's Wanda Summers, she uses words like compromise and trust and growth, which, to be absolutely clear, isn't to say those things are easy. She's had a successful law career, raised two kids, written a New York Times bestseller, and spent eight years in one of the world's brightest spotlights. And still, former First Lady Michelle Obama has had moments in an extraordinary life that still feel utterly relatable. You know, whenever you are putting yourself out into the public, I am no different. It is frightening, you know? Did I share too much? How will people receive the truth that I have to offer? And she lays some of that truth bare in her latest book. It's called The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times. It's a guidebook in many ways. Michelle Obama offers advice on coping with stress, navigating spaces of privilege, and a polarized political landscape. But It's also part memoir, revealing more memories of her childhood on Chicago's South Side, her early days of courtship with former President Barack Obama, and even what her daughters are up to these days. Barack one day sent them a text on earthquake preparedness (laughs) because (laughs) they now live in L.A. And it's that's the kind of thing you do as a parent. You think, are they prepared? So in the middle of the night, he's sending some article on a 10-step plan. And the response from one of my daughters was, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I, I always have to strike a balance of how much uh, sharing will help people and how do I make sure that I'm protecting my family's privacy. But I think about my writing like I think about everything else. I learn from stories. She was inspired to share those stories after readers of her first book, Becoming, wrote to her for help. I sat down with her at NPR studio in New York on Monday, where she told me a lot of the advice people ask her for is about marriage. To me, it's a philosophy. It's an outlook. We have to understand that marriage is never 50-50. I have found that if you stick with it, you know, over the course of your entire relationship, you may have 50-50 over time. Mm. But if I look over my marriage, if I were to judge it in year five or year 10, there was never 50-50. Somebody was always giving way more. Someone always needed a different kind of thing. You have to evolve with it. You also talk about some incredibly relatable experiences, Mm -hmm. such as the isolation of being the only, whether it is the only woman of color, the only black person in the room, of being the only person who didn't come from money at Mm -hmm. a college. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, now, all these years later in the journey that you have been on, do you still feel that way sometimes? And how do you deal with it? You know, honestly, of course, as Michelle Obama, (laughs) you know, I feel it less acutely. But that's fairly recent, you know. I mean, when we were in the White House, we were... The, the first and the only at many tables of power, watching people adjust to that. That was very reminiscent of the experiences that I had, you know, going to college and practicing in a corporate law firm and on and on and on. What I had to learn to do was to first get out of my own head uh, about Not it. easy, though. It's not, it is not an easy thing to do, and it takes practice, but... Part of what this book is reminding us is that there are no miracle answers to these things. It is a daily reminder that I have to take the mask that I am trying to hold up on my face, take it down so that I can see what I'm doing. And by mask, I mean stop trying to stop pretending 
to be something that I'm not, Mm -hmm. trying to fit in and leave behind the parts of me that make me real and authentic. Stop worrying about how I wear my hair and what somebody is going to think about it. Mm -hmm. Stop thinking about how I conjugate my verbs or what stories I tell about myself to make me fit into somebody else's world. But it takes practice. And I open the book by urging young people to understand that patience is an important tool. You mentioned patience, and Mm -hmm. that is something that I've been wanting to ask you about. You mentioned earlier the call to action that many of us know you for. When they go low, we Mm -hmm. go high. And in a past life, before I had this job, Mm -hmm. I was a political correspondent talking to young people in particular. And what I heard a lot, and I'm sure you hear this too from the people who write you letters or come to events Mm -hmm. that you hold, they feel a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they express that they feel a sense of rage given all of the hurt and Mm -hmm. harm and marginalization, the insurrection, attacks on LGBTQ Mm -hmm. rights, anti-Semitism. How does going high square with the urgency that so many people feel, especially young people feel in this moment? Well, that's the interesting thing because some young people interpret going high as being complacent. Mm -hmm. Going high doesn't mean sitting on the side of the road and watching, you know, injustice go by. Going high is about having a strategy, a real concrete strategy for change. It's taking the rage and turning it into reason. And it will never feel like enough because until everything is perfect, it will always be urgent. But in the meantime, what I urge young people to do is be rageful and own it, but have a plan, have a strategy that can work. You know, it strikes me as you write about how imperative it is that we should still go high, Mm -hmm. that we have, we're coming out of this period where all of us have faced so many challenges. Former President Trump is expected to announce that he's going to run for president yet again. Um, And I just wonder, you talk about this toolbox. What goes through your head and what tools do you reach for when you think about something like that? Oh, and my husband helps me with this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a moment. This is a moment. And we cannot let a moment turn us so upside down that we can't function. (laughs) So in these moments, I tell myself, I ask myself, and this is a chapter that I I call the power of small, right? What can I do in this moment that I can uniquely control when I think something's about to happen that I cannot control, right? Voting is one of those things. We each have the responsibility and the right to vote, at least right now. (laughs) So let us exercise it you know, so that we're we're not in a position to take it for granted and have those rights snatched away. Because let me tell you, if we don't, if we don't use them, if we don't protect them fiercely, we will lose those rights. We've seen it with abortion rights. And watching election after election, people not turning out because they didn't like that guy. It's not necessarily Trump, but anybody, right? Yeah, you know, we sit out, we don't we don't do the work because we're mad about who's in. We have this small power, each of us, to shape the direction of the country. And if we don't use it, you know, I, I mean, I, I you know, I, don't, I, I never want to throw my hands up, but I think, well, well what what are we going to do in this democracy if we quit on it? Former First Lady Michelle Obama, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. <laughs> thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks so much. And you can watch our entire conversation on NPR's YouTube page and on NPR.org. 